Hey everybody, from the beautiful viewpoint Windy Hill here in Reno, welcome to Exploring Our Backyard, brought to you by Lithia Subaru of Reno. I'm Alex Margulies, he's Brian Samudio. Now coming up on our show today, we will take you to the Tahoe Trifecta. How about skiing, wake surfing, and golfing all in one day, and in July, how many places in the world can you do that? Plus, Brian and Green learns the ropes of kayaking down on the Truckee River from local pro Sage Donnelly. And we send Julian Delgadio to the slopes for an introduction of skiing at iconic Sky Tavern. And if you ever wanted to feel like Rocket Man, we took a trip to Sand Harbor to give flyboarding a try. But first up on our show, we'll take you down to South Lake Tahoe for an air balloon ride over the lake. Good morning, everybody. I'm your pilot. My name is Sheldon Graberger, and I just want to tell you that this is the most beautiful place that I've ever flown in the world. Conditions were actually perfect today. Uh, you want to have really perfect weather when you're flying uh, over, over the lake and everything. We've been flying here over 20 years, and we want to make sure we keep our absolutely perfect safety record. This thing's all inflated. We're ready to go. We just got our instructions, so let's hop in. This is like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Where's Toto? We're gonna go up to 4,000 feet on this ride. Right now, 2,000 feet above the water right this moment. Well, today we actually uh, took off uh, over near Camp Richardson. On our first flight, we actually kind of went over the over the land and uh, got to scrape some the tops of some trees and look at some pine needles and everything up close. Then we went really high, got to see Fallen Leaf Lake, got to see uh, Cascade Lake, got to see Emerald Bay. scale of one to ten how incredible is this this is the most amazing event you could ever do if you have a chance take a hot air balloon ride over lake tahoe so unique i'd say 11. birthday girls could you have imagined a better 21st birthday present no not at all <laughs> it's way above anything that i would have ever asked for or dreamed of yeah. way above. Way above. Yeah. i love seeing people experience this for the first time every day Okay, yeah, uh, 75 degrees, 10.4. I wake up every single morning, and I can't believe they pay me to do this. How could it possibly get any better than this? Another reminder of why I love my backyard. What an amazing way to try hot air ballooning for the first time. Can't imagine a better place to do it. If you want to try it for yourself, contact Lake Tahoe Balloons. You can book your trip online at laketahoeballoons.com or by calling the number right there on your screen. The season runs from mid-May to mid-October. Rates are $299 per person. Coming up on Exploring Our Backyard, we'll take you flying over Lake Tahoe like a superhero when we try out flyboarding at Sand Harbor. But next, we'll take you on the Tahoe Trifecta. You won't want to miss it. Stick around.
Welcome to Squaw Valley USA, home of the 1960 Winter Olympics and the kickoff of our Tahoe trifecta. What's up everybody, Alex Margulies here for exploring our backyard. You know, when we launched this show last year, this is exactly the kind of day I envisioned. This is gonna be pretty nuts. July 1st, it's Freedom Fest here at Squaw Valley, and we're gonna go skiing. I'm in shorts, I'm in a button down shirt, never done this before. After that, we're gonna go wake surfing in Lake Tahoe. And to top that off, at the end of the day, we're gonna go golfing. How many places in the world can you do that? We can do it right here in our backyard. Let's do this. Walking in snow in July. Strange. Fourth of July, America! All right, we're all waxed up. July 1st skiing here at Squaw. We got Ryan Kerr, my buddy Travis. Let's hit it. Let's do it. Woo! What's up everyone? Lisa Kenny here from Squaw Valley Alpine Meadows here at the spring and now summer skiing capital. This is only the fourth time in our history that we've been open on the 4th of July. We had a really historic year this year. Uh, we got 60 feet of cumulative snowfall and we still have a seven foot base here up top. Every 20 years, there's a 4th of July that you can ski at and it's absolutely incredible. Where, where else in the world are you able to ski in bathing suits in July? This is awesome. Yeah. No worries, Squaw Valley, baby. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> hey, don't worry, I got it all on camera. That is what you call a full-blown yard sale. Yikes. Woo! Yeah! You know, I have never skied in July before, and this is awesome. We're done. On to phase two. You! Phase two! Everybody else on this boat has done this before at some point in their lives. I'm about to go in blind, so let's see how this turns out. <laughs> All right, spent my entire life snowboarding. From what I've been told, it's similar in that there's a person and a board involved. Never done this. golf for about seven years. We already know that my wake surfing game is much better than the golf game's about to display. All right, round two is a success on the lake. Awesome time on the boat. We'll see you up at the links to finish off this Tahoe trifecta. Can't believe we did it. Tahoe trifecta in the books. It's over. Awesome, you guys. We are lucky to live where we are. How many places? Skiing, wake surfing, golfing all in one day. Another reminder of why I love my backyard. All right, so out of those three activities, which one was your favorite? You know, I love all three, but skiing in July, I mean, with after this winter, 
I don't even know when the next time I'm going to chance to do that again, let alone if I'll ever have a chance to ski in July again. So that was certainly special. Squaw Valley stayed open until July 15th this year. It was the longest they've ever stayed open in their history, and that dates back all the way to 1949. Pretty incredible. Unbelievable winter. Coming up on Exploring Our Backyard, check it out. We will take you back to the slopes to Sky Tavern, where we put LA City slicker Julian Delgadio through some of his first lessons. And up next, Brenna Green joins pro kayaker Sage Donnelly for a trip through the Truckee River Whitewater Park in downtown Reno. Hi guys, I'm Brenna Green with this edition of Exploring Our Backyard. Easily accessible in downtown Reno, the Truckee River Whitewater Park is one of the most vibrant places in all of the city. So what better person to show us around the rapids other than Carson City native and world-class kayaker, Sage Donnelly. Every kind of aspect of kayaking I just find super fun, whether I'm just going down a river, enjoying the waves, just going up and down like a roller coaster, or I'm doing front flips uh, during a competition. It's all just so much fun to me. I'm, I'm really in love with the sport. But there were definitely a few steps to go over before we even stepped foot in the river. Sage, first of all, let's just go through all the gear that we need to uh, put on to, to be ready to do this. We're gonna put on full dry suits, so they're Gore-Tex full suits that have latex gaskets on your wrists and neck, so your whole body will stay dry. Probably the most effort you've ever spent getting dressed, right? Yes. <laughs> then we'll put on a spray skirt, and that goes over the cockpit of the boat, so if we do flip, we don't fall in. Let me expert do the work here. <laughs> Not even going to try. And then after that, we'll put on our PFDs, or personal flotation device. Last but not least, we'll finish with the helmet. Obvious reasons for that. Lots of rocks in this river. And then after a quick safety chat. If for some reason we do swim, don't worry about the boat or any of the gear, just let it go. If you are swimming, make sure you're facing downstream with your feet up. If we do flip, I will roll us, so just stay tucked forward. We were ready to enter the rushing Truckee. We started off slow, like learning how to hold a paddle slow. Okay, flip your paddle. There you go. And even out those hands a little bit. Who knew this kayaking thing was this difficult? Next, we headed out on the water. We're gonna lean downstream and stroke on our left. We first started off with what's called a ferry, and that's when you take your boat at about a 45 degree angle, and you go from one side of the river to the other. Then we really got into it, learning how to surf. And no, thankfully that did not involve any standing up surfing. It's when you get in a small wave or feature. We're doing what's called front surfing, which is when you're just sitting 
facing upstream, just in a nice controlled front serve. You can kind of go back and forth a little bit. And of course, we had to take a few trips down the river. Finally, we ended with an attempted barrel roll. Spoiler alert, I chickened out. How do you think I did on my, my first kayaking experience? Oh, you definitely did awesome. You picked up on the edging super fast, which is really cool. Most people struggle with that. And you were, you were a super good partner to paddle with. Like, it was really easy to control the boat and everything with you, and you listened to everything I said. I, I think it was awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sage, for your time today. I'm Brenna Green. This is why I love my backyard. How cool is it? Hanging out with Sage Donnelly, that girl is such a true pro. And definitely a professional when it comes to safety, which just still has to be a priority on the Truckee River. All right, coming up next on Exploring Our Backyard, we'll introduce you to the adrenaline-packed activity of flyboarding. And we return to the slopes as Julian Delgado learns how to ski at Sky Tavern. That's next. Welcome back to Exploring Our Backyard, brought to you by Lithia Subaru of Reno. He's Brian Samudio. I'm Alex Margulies. You know, Alex, with all the snow we saw this year, I know you were up there <laughs> a ton, but we had a chance to go up to Sky Tavern. So great to see it out in full force this year, and we sent LA native, the city slicker, Julian Delgadio, out for his first ever skiing lessons. Check this out. At first, it was kind of complicated but now I know it like the back of my hand. The teachers are great. They have good patience. There's nothing bad about this place. Everything here is good. They teach you everything step by step so you know how to ski when you're older. Perched atop Mount Rose Highway for almost 70 years, Sky Tavern has provided an affordable way for thousands of kids across northern Nevada to learn how to ski and snowboard. We are the oldest and largest volunteer ski school program in the country and maybe the world. And on this Bluebird Day, it was the perfect setting for my first lesson. There's no other programs like this and it's all run by volunteers, so everybody contributes to the program and their children come in and they, they learn so we all learn together, the parents learn, we learn, the children have a great time. It's a co-op. It's a bunch of parents putting time, talent, and treasure in a pot, stirring it up and making something happen for kids. Bill Henderson leads a bare bones crew of only three full-time employees who work tirelessly to keep Sky Tavern open. Everybody else that's here is a volunteer. It's, that's how this thing gets done. It was, without the parents, this couldn't happen. And for the director, 
those sleepless nights are well worth it. We're not in the skiing and snow sports business, we're in the child development business a little bit, and our job is to make great young adults out of great kids. And it works, and, they, and, it, and they're learning lessons here that they don't even know they're learning. It's awesome! It's a place that brings out the kid in everyone. Push your heels out. After getting the basics down, I was ready for my first run. And even despite a few bumps and hiccups, I was hooked, and I can't wait for my next chance to hit the slopes. And this is why I love my backyard. Once again, Sky Tavern is America's oldest and largest non-profit ski and snowboard program, and we are lucky to have it right here in our backyard, and they really rely heavily on donations and volunteers. For more information on how you can get involved or get you and your kids out on the slopes yourself, you can head to skytavern.org. Coming up next on Exploring Our Backyard, we head back up to the jewel of the Sierra, Lake Tahoe, to take on something called flyboarding. That's next. From the beautiful shores of Lake Tahoe to one of my favorite beaches in northern Nevada, Sand Harbor, and the site of our next Exploring Our Backyard. Hey everybody, Alex Margulies and Julian Delgadio. You know, the last couple of years, I've noticed something around the lake, and it looks like Rocket Man, a guy flying through the air with a jetpack, and it's actually called flyboarding. We're gonna try it today. Neither of us have done anything like this. Julian, what is your stoke level right now to try this? I'm at pretty much a 10 right now. The way I kind of compare this is from the Spider-Man movies. If you guys remember Green Goblin on like that hoverboard and there's a jetpack, you're gonna fly in the air. I just hope I could figure out a way to balance. I hope we don't make a fool out of ourselves. Either way, we're gonna have some fun. Let's check it out. I'm Drew Levine and I'm the owner of Tahoe Fly Zone, the only flyboarding company on Lake Tahoe. It's a jet pack that you stand on. It, all the water from the jet ski comes right under your feet and you can sort of move around like Iron Man, dive in the water, shoot up and just sort of fly around 10, 20 feet above the water. There's nothing like it and it's a, a lot easier than people think. This is the pipe that we use to put on the back of the flyboard. Basically has a special plate on the back of this jet ski where the steering used to be. You can pop this on and clip it on just that quick. All right, so not only do we get to try flyboarding here today, we're also gonna go on this Sea-Doo Speedster. It's kind of a hybrid between a boat and a jet ski, and they're actually gonna let me drive this thing. All right.
Man, this jet boat is wild. It really feels like you're driving the mix of a jet ski and a boat. It's nimble, it's quick. This thing is a lot of fun, but we're here to go jet boarding too. Let's hit it. So a few weeks ago, I failed miserably at wake surfing. It's time for some redemption. It's pretty much like riding a bike. You wanna be standing up, your arms are loose, your upper body is nice and calm, and you just stay above your toes. And then it's like those hoverboards, you know, where you lean forward and back. That's pretty much the motion. Like your Iron Man, you know, Julian is by far the nicest dives I've ever seen anyone try. They're truly phenomenal. <laughs> How does your stomach feel? Deuces. Rocket Man! I'll uh, tighten it up for you. Yeah. If I can get my feet in here, anyone's feet can fit in here. Except for I've maybe Ryan Kern. He's got dinosaur feet. Yeah, you didn't look like you were having any fun at <laughs> all. If you want to try it out, it's flyboarding. They do it up at Tahoe. Tahoe Fly Zone, located right next to the boat launch at Sand Harbor. That's in Lake Tahoe. Flyboarding starts at $129 for 25 minutes of flight time. If you want to hop on one of those jet boats, they rent those two $599 for four hours. For more information, visit TahoeFlyZone.com. That's it for this edition of Exploring Our Backyard. Check News 4 and Fox 11 every two weeks for new features throughout the rest of the summer. But we are not anywhere close to being done. We're going to have another half hour long show for you coming up later on in the summertime, and we'll have our features every two weeks. I want to go fishing next. How about that? Let's do it. We'll see you on the Truckee River. For Brenda Green, Julian Delgadio, and Brian Samudio, I'm Alex Margulies. We'll see you next time.